This second video in my new series answers the question, what is value at risk, also called VAR? Hi, this is David. I'm excited to share the second video in our new series on financial risk by answering the question, what is value at risk, also called VAR? Among financial institutions at least, VAR is probably the most common risk measure. So in order to show you VAR, we're going to have to first assume or imagine that the hardest part of the work is already done, and that is the specification of the probability distribution, which I happen to be using the normal here just because it's the most familiar and easiest to do. There's a difference between uncertainty and risk. Uncertainty is when we have no idea what's going to happen in the future. I'm all, I only have a daily horizon here, so we're really talking about tomorrow. Uncertainty is we don't know. Risk is the translation of that we don't know into a probability distribution. So you can imagine there's a lot of controversy and challenge in that, and we can debate that. But let's assume we've successfully done that. I'm using a normal because it's familiar, but I would just would like to say two things about it. First, the central limit theorem in statistics oftentimes justifies the use of the normal. It's really magical. So as much as the normal is maligned in popular press, or financial press at least, in many cases, statistics shows us why it's the best approximation. That said, second point is, realistically, however, in terms of our heavy tail losses, the normal's not the best, and that doesn't matter to VAR. VAR accepts any probability distribution. That's important because there is oftentimes a confusion that if a company is using VAR, they must be assuming the normal distribution. VAR can use any probability distribution, whether parametric or empirical. Normal is the most familiar example of a parametric distribution, but there's dozens if not hundreds of parametric distributions, log normal, gamma, beta, for example. A parametric distribution is any distribution where we can express it with a, an elegant function like we can with the normal. But it also accepts an empirical distribution. That would be where we line up the historical losses and sort them in a histogram. So it would be messy data, but VAR can use that as well. Once we specify the probability distribution, we can then answer the question, what is value at risk? So I'm going to do that, and I have very simple parameters. The normal only has two parameters here. I almost have a standard normal, which would be mu0, sigma1, but I've scooted the mu or expected return over $1.00. I have a one day period, so what I'm imagining here is we have a portfolio and we're expecting, or the average return tomorrow is plus $1. May, or may, if you like, it's a big portfolio and the re expected return is plus $1 million. And so pretty close to a standard normal, but I scooted it over one and I've got the standard deviation of one that's denoted by Greek sigma, also very familiar. So then this is then a probability distribution or picture of approximately what could happen tomorrow with this portfolio. Profits over here on the right, losses on the left. VAR is one-tailed. Unlike a typical statistical significance test, which is two-tailed, VAR only cares about the losses. So I'm now going to change the confidence level from 100% so I can answer the question, what is the 95% value at risk? And that's probably the most popular calibration here for confidence level. And so if my confidence is 95%, one minus my confidence is the one-tailed significance level. And my standard normal deviate is negative 1.645. So you can see here in the probability distribution that we've mapped out, when I, when I put in 95% confidence, I have a significance of 5%. And what that means on this distribution is that this is the 5% tail. If this is accurate, then 5% of the time, we should end up here, or on 5% of days, we should end up in this part of the lost tail. 95% of the time, we should be over here. 
And so the 95% value at risk is literally just the quantile. So that's my favorite expression of VARs from Kevin Dowd, where he writes in the book, VAR is just a quantile. The quantile is the value here on the x-axis associated with some cumulative probability. In this case, 5%. And so this value here, while the standard normal deviate is negative 1.645, we've scooted this normal over. So this value here, you can see, is negative uh, 65 cents. And so we've already answered the question of VAR. What we've said is that this is, a this is on a daily basis. 5% of the days, we expect the losses to be in this extreme tail of bad outcomes for us. 95% of the time, expect to be over here. So that we only expect our loss to exceed this VAR, negative 65 cents, on 5% of the days. It's the worst expected loss with some level of confidence. It's not with 100% because this normal is asymptotic and we don't know. It could be way out here. But with 95% confidence tomorrow, we expect the loss not to exceed this quantile of negative 65 cents. So I'll change it now, just for example, I'll increase our level of confidence to 99%. And you can see the implied cumulative distribution is a function gives us a quantile that's even further over here to the left. At 99% confidence, 1% significance, the standard normal deviate, that would be on the Z lookup table, and really it's memorized by most FRM candidates. The standard normal deviate associated with 99% or 1% significance is negative 2.33 approximately. But we've scooted it over, so the quantile associated here with 99% confidence is a loss of negative a loss of one dollar and thirty three cents approximately. So here we've answered the question. If the question is what is the ninety nine percent var, we've said it's a dollar thirty three about because only on one percent of days do we expect the loss to be worse than the var or one dollar and thirty three cents. So that's really all it is. You can see how it's just a statistical feature of the distribution that we have to specify, and then two decisions we make about how we want to design the VAR. The first is the horizon, and I'm only doing a one-day horizon here. Keep it simple. And the second decision we can make is 99%. There's nothing wrong with using a lower level of confidence that has other purposes. Here we're saying on 10% of the days, we expect the loss to be worse than 28 cents about. And so then hopefully that's enough for us to recognize what can be challenging notation if we don't comprehend the idea. But here's, for example, is Jorian's expression for VAR. The probability that the loss will exceed the VAR level, which is a quantile, a value here on the x-axis, is less than or equal to, in other words, at most, 1 minus the confidence level. In this case, the probability that the loss will exceed 28 cents is at most 10%. So I hope that answers the question. See you on the next video.